All right, one other gauge of breadth is looking actually at stocks drawdown, looking at how many stocks are going down. This is again, this is kind of more looking at the bearish side. So we look at kind of the, the strong signs the market's improving, looking at improvements in breadth, looking at drawdown is a way to look at kind of the other side when we start seeing deterioration in the market. And this is a chart, again, I share um, quite a bit in my, th my weekly Thrasher Analytics letter, is the number of stocks that are down 10%, 20%, 30%. And you can see as the market was going lower, we started seeing a large increase in the number of stocks that were down 20 and 30%. The market had was down maybe about 10% um, by March, and we already had almost half the market was already that had already been down 20% telling us that the internals were pretty were pretty weak. We were seeing a lot of selling within the market, even though the S&P had absorbed it pretty well. And finally, when we saw that low in June, we had almost half the market was down 30%. 74% of the stocks were down 20%, and just about every stock was in some type of decline, with 97% of the market down at least 10%. Obviously, this data has now begun to improve. We now have, quote unquote, less than, 25% uh, of the market down only 30%. But this tells me as of right now, we still have a lot of stocks that are in very deep drawdowns. And this could be viewed as one, a positive that there's still a lot of stocks that can make a recovery, but it's also a negative in the sense that there's still a lot of weakness within this market. A lot of stocks are still in downtrends, which puts a bearish pressure on the overall market. When you have, again, almost a quarter of, of stocks are down um, 30 plus percent very rarely do we see the market itself down 30%. There's been a lot of selling, uh, primarily in the growth side of the market. Many stocks are down 70, 80, 90% um, that have occurred this year as the sellers really have ravaged some of these high growth names. And so we can use this drawdown data and then compare it to how are the individual stocks doing versus how is the index doing? So here we're looking at the spread between index drawdown and average stock drawdown. And when that spread is greater than 9% in individual stocks, and the index is only down about 3%, you can see there's a, a red arrow plotted. And very rarely do we see this happen. We saw it again at the peak, we saw it before 2018, and then we actually had to go all the way back to the dot-com period to find the last time we saw a lot of stocks really breaking down, but the index only being down 3%. If you were trading during that time period, you were very well aware that we saw a lot of stocks really bleeding a lot um, in the late 90s, early 2000s, before finally the indexes themselves began to break down. And so that spread between individual stock drawdown and index drawdown got very high. You can see it almost got to 20%. Um, and we didn't see the same level of, of spread before the financial crisis. And uh, the last time we really saw it was in 2018 and in January of this year. So we can compare the average stock weakness to the index weakness and know that, that that proverbial kind of branch can only be bent so far before it breaks. Um, and one chart that I think is really interesting, kind of on the, the same, same level, is looking at small caps. Here's the S&P, I'm sorry, the Russell 2000, and then the average Russell 2000 stock drawdown. The index itself got nowhere near its uh, COVID crash lows from 2020, but look at the average stock drawdown it actually got lower than in 2020. The average stock in the Russell 2000, the average small cap stock, saw actually a greater than 40% decline, um, whereas the index bottomed actually near 40% in 2020, but only came to about 30% this year. So this tells us that there was a lot of internal weakness within the Russell. A lot of individual small cap stocks really were getting beat up hard, and the index itself absorbed that pretty well, but the internals were awful for small cap stocks. And now we're starting to see a, a strong improvement from there um, as they begin to rebound. But, but internally, there was a lot of damage in those, those Russell 2000 stocks. So as a stock picker, as a trader, I begin to use that data and say, there might be some oversold stocks in small cap land <laughs> um, that may be interesting mean reversion plays. And so that's obviously a topic for another day. But looking at this saying, that there may be some stocks that are way oversold and ripe for a rebound. And we actually saw that start to play out in July. We saw a lot of stocks bounce 20, 30, 40% because they just were way too oversold and start looking for just there's no buyers left and there's no sellers left because everyone had already sold. And so those stocks began to bounce um, because there was a lot more weakness in the individual stock than the actual index. And so these are a lot of different ways to measure breadth 
whether we look at the, the trends, new highs, new lows, look at momentum, um, look at drawdown. There's a lot of ways that we can really get a handle on the health of the underlying market. And thankfully, there's actually a lot of different places to get this type of data. All the charts that you're seeing me present here from Optima, that's my primary charting package. I also use stockcharts.com, it's great. The, a lot of the breadth data can be found at barcharts.com, finviz.com, uh, the Wall Street Journal actually publishes uh, the raw data every day as well. So there's a lot of different sites, and these aren't. This isn't an exhaustive list. This is just some of the the ones I'm most familiar with. But there's a lot of different places. Some are that you have to pay for. Some are free. Um, that you can obtain some of this breadth data. I think it's extremely useful. Um, I think it's something that a lot of traders really uh, would benefit from from using. Um, it can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of data there. Um, but being able to get your arms around it or at least follow, maybe reading and following someone that does can give great insight to the market and telling us whether the market's healthy or not and whether there's a lot of participation in the underlying trend, whether that's going higher or lower of the market. 